Hello, my name is John Baldwin. I'm the Managing Director of CNG Services Limited. We won our award back in 2011 for the Didcot Biomethane project, which has paved the way for 100 such projects now, uh, enough to uh, heat 40,000 homes or run 10,000 heavy goods vehicles. Going forward, we're very excited about the potential for manures as a feedstock and carbon capture and storage. We won't be burning any biogas, we won't be venting any CO2, and we'll be using renewable electricity for all our heating. Put all that together, you cannot beat all that. It'll keep us busy for the next 10 years. Hello, I'm Stephen Barrett, MD of SolarSense. You're winning the national award to put us on the map nationally. We then went on and worked for Crown Estates, RSPB, did our first solar the parks and megawatt roofs, built our own zero carbon office. And with the green recovery now, we can only see solar expanding with batteries, heat pumps, solar carports, and we can help the UK transition to zero energy economy. This is, one of our, this is one of our products. This is a new, what's called dye synthesized thin film that, we've, that works in low light conditions. And here we are in uh, Cardiff where it's uh, not very sunny, it's cloudy, and uh, we're producing uh, solar power to charge that phone. It's charging it up just from this pack here. Just from this pack here. And Today, we began something that started about uh, three months ago. The young people that we've been working with have had a training program where they've learned about setting up a co-op, an energy co-op, which allows power to, for, and by the people. They learned about air quality, so they worked on air quality well. They learned about growing, so they worked on developing the soil and building spaces to grow vegetables. Uh, they learned about solar panels, so they had the ability to then put the solar power into action and pump water that was collected from rainwater harvesting from the rooftops of this station. For us, maize and grass silage plus food waste. This plant is specifically designed for that requirement. Our CHP is an engine which burns biogas to generate electricity. It also takes the heat from the engine and from the exhaust and puts it through a heat exchanger so that we can then use it on site as a domestic heating supply. Uh, and we pump that into huge digestion tanks and in very simple terms that gets heated to body temperature and it mimics our own human biology. And that food waste begins to break down and it gives off gas just like it does in our own bodies but it's a very valuable gas because it has methane in it and we capture that methane we put it through two engines on site and that's how we create the renewable energy. In this vehicle, as the driver applies the brakes, electricity is generated by a traction motor at the front or rear axle. This electricity passes down cables directly to charge the flywheel, which spins up to very high speeds. When the driver then accelerates, the whole system works in reverse. The flywheel is slowed, which pushes the electricity back down the same cables, providing extra energy to the wheels. Bristol will soon have nearly 100 buses running on fuel made from food waste. It's called biomethane and experts say it is better for air quality and helps climate change problems. Is there enough gas from waste food and human waste to fuel what the guy here said might be all of Bristol's buses and around every city? Yes, definitely. Um, there are different sources from food, from waste agricultural products, from uh, landfill gas and other countries have shown that they can generate a lot of uh, useful gas in this way. There's nothing to hold us back basically.